Inspiration from the Bhagavad Gita The Song Divine O Son of Kunti The contacts between the senses and their objects which give rise to the feelings of heat and cold, pleasure and pain, etc., are transitory and fleeting. Therefore, Arjuna, endure them. Chapter 2 becomes eligible for immortality. Chapter 2, verse 15 Chapter 2, verse 20 Treating alike victory and defeat, gain and loss, pleasure and pain, Get ready for the battle. Fighting thus, you will not incur sin. Chapter 2, verse 38 Arjuna in this yoga of selfless action, the intellect is determined and directed singly towards one ideal, whereas the intellect of the undecided, ignorant man moved by desires, wanders in directions after innumerable aims. Chapter 2 Verse 41 Your right is to work only and never to the fruit thereof. Don't consider yourself to be the cause of the fruit of action, nor let your attachment be to inaction. Chapter 2 Verse 47. Arjuna, perform your duties. Is that 
established in yoga renouncing attachment and be even minded in success and failure evenness of mind is called yoga chapter 2 stable mind speak how does he sit how does he walk shri bhagavan said arjuna when one thoroughly casts off all cravings of the mind and is satisfied in the self through the joy of the self he is then called stable of mind chapter 2 verses 54 and 55 the sage whose mind remains unperturbed amid sorrows whose thirst for pleasures has altogether disappeared and who is free from passion fear and anger is called stable of mind chapter 2 verse 56 Seven. Therefore, having controlled all the senses and concentrating his mind, he should sit for meditation, devoting himself heart and soul to me for he whose senses are under his control is known to have a stable mind chapter 2 verse 61 
goes to complete ruin. Chapter 2 Verses 62 and 63 But the self-controlled Sadhaka, while enjoying the various sense objects through his senses, which are disciplined and free from likes and dislikes, attains placidity of mind. Chapter 2 Verse 64 With the attainment of such placidity of mind, all his sorrows come to an end, and the intellect of such a person of tranquil mind, soon withdrawing itself from all sides, becomes firmly established in God. Chapter 2, verse 65 controlled his mind and senses can have no determinate intellect nor contemplation. Without contemplation, he can have no peace. And how can there be happiness for one lacking Peace of mind. Chapter 2, verse 66. As the wind carries away a boat upon the waters, even so of the senses moving among sense objects, the one to which the mind is attached takes away his discrimination. Chapter 2, verse 67 Therefore, Arjuna, he whose senses are completely restrained from their objects is said to have a stable mind. Chapter 2 Verse 68 As the waters of different rivers enter the ocean, which, though full on all sides, remains undisturbed. Likewise, he in whom all enjoyments merge themselves without causing disturbance attains peace. Not he who hankers after such enjoyments. Chapter 2 desires and moves free from attachment, egoism, and thirst for enjoyment attains peace. Chapter 2 Verse 
he attains Brahmic bliss. Chapter 2, verse 72. does not attain freedom from action, culmination of the discipline of action, without entering upon action. Nor does he reach perfection, culmination of the discipline of knowledge, merely by ceasing to act. Chapter 3 Man is bound by his own action, except when it is performed for the sake of sacrifice. And therefore, Arjuna, do you efficiently perform your duty free from attachment for the sake of sacrifice alone. Chapter 3 Verse 9 by sacrifice, the gods will surely bestow on you unasked all the desired enjoyments. He who enjoys the gifts bestowed by them without offering their share to them is undoubtedly a thief. Therefore, go on efficiently doing your duty at all times without attachment. Doing work without attachment, man attains the Supreme. Chapter 3 Verse 19 unattained by me, yet I continue to work. Chapter 3, verse 22 are being performed by the modes of property, primordial nature. The fool whose mind is deluded by egoism thinks, I am the doer. Chapter 3, verse 27 Therefore, dedicating all actions to me with your mind fixed on me, the self of all, freed from
from desire and the feeling of fear and cured of mental agitation. Fight. Chapter 3 Verse 30 As fire is covered by smoke, mirror by dust and embryo, by the amnion, so is knowledge covered by desire. Chapter 3 Verse 38 Knowledge stands covered by this eternal enemy of the wise, known as desire, which is insatiable like fire. Chapter 3, verse 39 the mind and the intellect are declared to be its seat, covering the knowledge through this it desire deludes the embodied soul. Chapter 3 Verse 40 than the mind is the intellect, and what is greater than the intellect is he, the self. Chapter 3, verse 42 Thus Arjuna, knowing the self, which is higher than the intellect, and subduing the mind by reason, kill this enemy in the form of desire that is hard to overcome. Chapter 3 Verse 4 verse 14 What 
what is action and what is inaction even men of intelligence are puzzled over this question therefore i shall expound to you the truth about action knowing which you will be freed from its evil effects the shackles of karma chapter 4 verse 16 he who sees in action in action and action in inaction is wise among men he is a yogi who has performed all actions chapter 4 verse even the wise call him a sage whose undertakings are all free from desire and sankalpa thoughts of the world and whose actions are burnt up by the fire of wisdom chapter 4 verse 19 he who having totally given up attachment to actions and their fruit no longer depends on anything in the world and is ever content does nothing at all though fully engaged in action chapter 4 verse 20 having subdued his mind and body and having given up all objects of enjoyment free from craving he who performs sheer bodily action does not incur sin chapter 4 verse 21 yogi who is contented with whatever is got unsought is free from jealousy and has transcended all pairs of opposites like joy and grief and is balanced in success and failure is not bound by his action chapter 4 verse 22 
get dissolved entirely, who is free from attachment and has no identification with the body, and free from the feeling of mind, whose mind is established in the knowledge of self, and who works merely for the sake of sacrifice. Chapter 4, verse 23 forms of sacrifice have been set forth in detail in the Vedas. Know them all as involving the action of mind, senses, and body. Thus, knowing the truth about them, you shall be freed from the bondage of action through their performance. Chapter 4 Verse 32 that knowledge, you will see the entire creation first within your own self and then in me, the over soul. Chapter 4 verse 35 and is full of faith, attains knowledge. Having had the revelation of truth, he immediately attains supreme peace in the form of God-realization. Chapter 4 Verse 39 He who lacks discrimination is devoid of faith and is at the same time possessed by doubt is lost to the spiritual path. For the doubting soul, there is neither this world nor the world beyond, nor even happiness. Chapter 4 Verse Arjuna, actions don't bind him who has dedicated 
all his actions to God according to the spirit of Karma Yoga, whose doubts have been dispelled by wisdom and who is self-possessed. Chapter 4 Verse 41 Chapter 4, verse 42 The Karma Yogi, who neither hates nor desires should ever be considered as an ever-renunciant. For Arjuna, he who is free from the payers of opposites, is easily liberated from bondage. Chapter 5 Verse 3 However, the Sankhya Yogi, who knows the reality of things, must believe that he does nothing even though seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, eating, or drinking, working, sleeping, breathing, speaking, answering the calls of nature, grasping, and opening or closing the eyes, holding that it is the senses alone that are moving among their objects. Chapter 5 Verses 8 and 9 He who acts offering all actions to God and shaking of attachment remains untouched by sin as the lotus live by water. Chapter 5 Verse 10 
the karma yogis perform action only with their senses, mind, intellect, and body as well, without the feeling of Mayan in respect of them and shaking of attachment simply for the sake of self purification. Chapter 5, verse 11. Offering the fruit of actions to God, the karma yogi attains everlasting peace in the form of God realization, whereas he who works with a selfish motive being attached to the fruit of actions through desire gets tired down. Chapter 5 Verse 12 The wise look with equanimity on all, whether it be a breath minute endowed with learning and humility, a cow, an elephant, a dog, and a pariah. Chapter 5, verse 18 The pleasures which are born of sense contacts are verily a source of suffering only, though appearing as enjoyable to worldly-minded people. They have a beginning and an end. They come and go. Arjuna, it is for this reason that a wise man does not indulge in them. Chapter 5 Verse 22. He alone who is able to withstand in this very life before casting off this body, the urges of lust and anger is a yogi, and he alone is a happy man. Chapter 5, verse 23 within himself the delight of the soul and even so is illumined 
by the inner light, light of the soul, such a yogi, Sankhya yogi, identified with Brahma, attains Brahma, who is all peace. Chapter 5, verse 24. wise men who are free from lust and anger, who have subdued their mind and have realized God, Brahma, the abode of eternal peace, is present all round. Chapter 5, verse 26. Shutting out all thoughts of external enjoyments with the gaze fixed on the space between the eyebrows, having regulated the prana, outgoing, and the apana, incoming, breaths flowing within the nostrils. He who has brought his senses, mind, and intellect under control, such a contemplative soul intent on liberation and free from desire, fear and anger is ever liberated. Chapter 5 verses 27 and 28 When a man ceases to have any attachment for the objects of senses and for actions and has renounced all sankalpas, thoughts of the world, he is said to have attained yoga. Chapter 6 Verse 4 One should lift oneself by one's own efforts and should not degrade oneself. For one's own self is one's friend and one's own self is one's enemy. Chapter 6 Verse 5 soul by whom the lower self consisting of the mind, senses and body has been conquered. Even so, the very self of him who has not conquered 
correct his lower self behaves antagonistically like an enemy. Chapter 6 Verse 6 The Supreme Spirit is rooted in the knowledge of the self-controlled man whose mind is perfectly serene in the midst of pairs of opposites such as cold and heat, joy and sorrow, and honor and ignominy. Chapter 6 Verse 7 The yogi whose mind is sated with jnana, knowledge of nirguna brahma, and vijnana, knowledge of manifest divinity, who is unmoved under any circumstances, whose senses are completely under control, and to whom earth, stone, and gold are all alike is spoken of as a god realized soul chapter 6 verse 8 he who looks upon well-wishers and neutrals, as well as mediators, friends and foes, relatives and inimicals, the virtuous and the sinful, with equanimity, stands supreme. Chapter 6, verse 9 Occupying that seat, concentrating the mind and controlling the functions of the mind and senses, he should practice yoga for self purification. Holding the trunk, head, and neck straight and steady, remaining firm and fixing the gaze on the tip of his nose without looking in other directions. Chapter 6 verses 12 and 13 Constantly applying his mind to me, the yogi of disciplined mind attains everlasting peace, consisting of supreme bliss which abides in me. Chapter 6 Verse 15 
over is no for him who observes complete fast it is neither for him who is given to too much sleep nor even for him who is ceaselessly awake yoga which reads one of woe is accomplished only by him who is regulated in diet and recreation regulated in performing actions and regulated in sleep and wakefulness chapter 6 verses 16 and 17 As a flame does not flicker in a windless place, such is stated to be the picture of the disciplined mind of the yogi practicing meditation on God. Chapter 6 Verse The state in which the Sita mind stuff subdued through the practice of yoga becomes completely tranquil and in which realizing God through subtle reasoning purified by meditation on God the soul rejoices only in God. Chapter 6 Verse 20 And having obtained, which he does not reckon any other gain as greater than that, and established in which he is not shaken even by the heaviest of sorrows. Chapter 6 Verse 22 That state called yoga, which is free from the contact of sorrow in the form of transmigration, should be known. Nay, this yoga should be resolutely practiced with an unvaried mind. Chapter 6, verse 23. Completely renouncing all desires arising from Sankara 
help us thoughts of the world and fully restraining all the senses from all sides by the mind. He should through gradual practice attain tranquility and fixing the mind on God through reason controlled by steadfastness he should not think of anything else. Drawing back the restless and fidgety mind from all those objects after which it runs, he should repeatedly fix it on God. For to the yogi whose mind is perfectly serene, who is sinless, whose passion is subdued, and who is identified with Brahma, the embodiment of truth, knowledge, and bliss, supreme happiness comes as a matter of course. Chapter 6 Verses from 24 to 27 The yogi who is established in union with me and worships me as residing in all beings as their very self, whatever activities he performs, he performs them in me. Chapter 6, verse 31 Arjuna, he who looks on all as one on the analogy of his own self and looks upon the joy and sorrow of all equally. Such a yogi is deemed to be the highest of all. Chapter 6 Verse 32 
mind is restless, no doubt, and difficult to curb, Arjuna, but it can be brought under control by repeated practice of meditation and by the exercise of dispassion, O son of Kunti. Chapter 6 Verses 34 and 35 through delusion in the form of pairs of opposites such as pleasure and pain etc form of desire and aversion all living creatures in this world are falling a prey to infatuation Chapter 7, verse 27 Arjuna, whosoever always and constantly thinks of me with undivided mind to that yogi ever absorbed in me I am easily attainable chapter 8 verse 14 Whosoever offers me with love a leaf, a flower, a fruit, or water, I appear in person before that selfless devotee of sinless mind and delightfully partake of that article offered by him with love. Chapter 9 Verse 26 Arjuna, whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer as oblation to the sacred fire, whatever you bestow as a gift, whatever you do by way of penance, offer all that to me. With your mind thus established in the yoga of renunciation, offering of all actions to me, you will be freed from the bondage of action in the form of good and evil results, thus freed from them you will attain me. Chapter 9 verses 27 and 28 
vow to worship me, abide in me, and I too stand revealed to them. Chapter nine, verse twenty-nine. I am the source of all creation and everything in the world moves because of me. Knowing thus, the wise, full of devotion, constantly worship me. Chapter 10 Verse 8 In order to bestow my compassion on them, I, dwelling in their hearts, dispel their darkness, born of ignorance, by the illuminating lamp of knowledge. Chapter 10 Verse 11 Arjuna, I am the universal self seated in the hearts of all beings. So I alone am the beginning, the middle, and also the end of all beings. Chapter 10 Verse Suffice it to say that I hold this entire universe by a fraction of my yogic power. Chapter 10, verse 42 Arjuna, he who performs 
all his duties for my sake depends on me, is devoted to me, has no attachment and is free from malice towards all beings reaches me. Chapter 11 Verse 55 If you cannot steadily fix the mind on me, Arjuna, then seek to attain me through the yoga of practice. Chapter 12, verse 9 If you are unequal even to the pursuit of such practice, be intent to work for me. You shall attain perfection in the form of my realization, even by performing actions for my sake. Chapter 12 Verse 10 If taking recourse to the yoga of my realization you are unable even to do this, then subduing your mind and intellect, etc., relinquish the fruit of all actions. Chapter 12, verse 11 Knowledge is better than practice without discernment. Meditation on God is superior to knowledge and renunciation of the fruit of actions is even superior to meditation for peace immediately follows renunciation chapter 12 verse 12 is free from malice towards all beings, friendly and compassionate and free from the feelings of I and Maya, balanced in joy and sorrow, forgiving by nature, ever contented and 
mentally united with me, nay, who has subdued his mind, senses, and body, has a firm resolve, and has surrendered his mind and reason to me, and that devotee of mine is dear to me. Chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. He who is not a source of annoyance to his fellow creatures and who in his turn does not feel vexed with his fellow creatures and who is free from delight and envy, perturbation and fear is dear to me. Chapter 12 Verse 15 is wise and impartial and has risen above all distractions and who renounces the sense of doership in all undertakings, such a devotee of mine is dear to me. Chapter 12, verse 16 He who neither rejoices, nor hates, nor grieves, nor desires, and who renounces both good and evil actions, and is full of devotion, is dear to me. Chapter 12, verse 17 the Supreme Lord as imperishable and abiding equally in all perishable beings, both animate and inanimate. Chapter 13, verse 27 He who sees that all actions are performed in every way by nature, property, and the self as the non-doer, he alone verily sees. Chapter 13 Verse 29 
is the all-pervading ether is not contaminated by reason of its subtlety, though permitting the body, the self is not affected by the attributes of the body due to its attributeless character. Chapter 13 Verse 32 Arjuna, as the one sun, illumines this entire universe, so the one Atma, spirit, illumines the whole etc. field. Chapter 13, verse 33 He who is ever established in the self takes pain and pleasure alike, regards a clod of earth as stone and a piece of gold as equal in value, is possessed of wisdom, accepts the pleasant as well as the unpleasant in the same spirit and views censure and praise alike. Chapter 14 verse 24 Nonviolence in thought, word, and deed, truthfulness and geniality of speech, absence of anger even on provocation, disclaiming doership in respect of actions, quietude or composure of mind abstaining from slander, compassion towards all creatures, absence of attachment to the objects of senses, even during their contact with the senses, mildness, a sense of shame in transgressing the scriptures or social conventions, and abstaining from frivolous pursuits, sublimity, forgiveness, fortitude, external purity, bearing enmity to none, and absence of self-esteem. These are, O Arjuna, the marks of him who is born with the divine endowments. Chapter 16 verses 2 
and three. Desire, anger, and greed. This triple gates of hell bring about the downfall of the soul. Therefore, one should shun all these three. Chapter 16, verse 21. Cheerfulness of mind, placidity, habit of contemplation on God, control of the mind, and perfect purity of inner feelings. All this is called austerity of the mind. Chapter 17 Verse 16 Prohibited acts and those that are motivated by desire should no doubt be given up. But it is not advisable to abandon a prescribed duty. Such abandonment out of ignorance has been declared as Tamasika. Chapter 18, verse 7. which is conducive to blessedness imbued with the quality of goodness he has all his doubts resolved is intelligent and a man of true renunciation chapter 18 Verse 10 Since all actions cannot be given up in their entirety by Anyone possessing a body, he alone who renounces the fruit of actions is called a man of renunciation. Chapter 18, verse 11. The knower, knowledge.
knowledge and the object of knowledge, these three motivate action. Even so, the doer, the organs and activity, these are the three constituents of action. Chapter 18 Verse 18 Keenly devoted to his own natural duty, man attains the highest perfection in the form of God realization. Here the mode of performance whereby the man engaged in his inborn duty reaches the highest consummation. Chapter 18 Verse 45 disappeared and who has subdued his mind reaches through Sanya Yoga, the path of knowledge, the consummation of actionlessness. Chapter 18 Verse 49 Arjuna, know from me only briefly the process through which men, having attained actionlessness, which is the highest consummation of Jnana Yoga, the path of knowledge, reaches Brahma. Chapter 18 Verse 15 Mentally dedicating all your actions to me and taking recourse to yoga in the form of even-mindedness, be solely devoted to me and 
constantly fix your mind on me. Chapter 18 Verse 57 With your mind thus devoted to me, you shall by my grace overcome all difficulties. But if from self-conceit you do not care to listen to me, you will be lost. Chapter 18 Verse 58 Arjuna, God abides in the heart of all creatures, causing them to revolve according to their karma by his elusive power, Maya, as though mounted on a machine. Take refuge in Him alone with all your being, Arjuna. By His mere grace, you will attain supreme peace and the eternal abode. Chapter 18 Verses 61 and 62 Resigning all your duties to me, the all-powerful and all-supporting Lord, take refuge in me alone. I shall absolve you of all sins. Worry not. Chapter 18 Verse 66 This audio was recorded and narrated by Uyasar Sabdorova. Thank you for listening. I hope this inspirational video will help you attain peace. focus better. 
see you next time